whilst it might be relatively simple to understand the effects of changing the spatial, spectral or even temporal resolution of a data set, it's often a little bit more difficult to understand the effects of radiometric resolution. This is because when many sensors change the radiometric resolution, perhaps through a new generation of sensor for example, they also change some other aspect of their characteristics. So they might also increase a spectral or spatial resolution at the same time. So the actual impact of radiometric resolution change is difficult to isolate from the other factors. So to be able to understand this a little bit more, I've got a short demonstration where I'm actually going to simulate a change. So as you can see, I've got a Landsat image up here, and this has been both radiometrically and atmospherically corrected. So what I'm actually going to do is to degrade this from its native 8-bit format all the way down to a 2-bit display. So first of all, what I'm going to do is if you have a look at the pixel values in here, you can see that they range between 0 and 1. So these, these are just standard reflectance values. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is to rescale this back to 0 to 255. So you can actually see that it's 8-bit data. So there'll be a, a possible number of 256 values within an individual pixel. So to do this, what I'm going to do is go up to Basic Tools and go to Stretch Data. I'll select my input file and under this range here, I'm going to change this from 0 to 255. Okay, so remembering that 2 to the power of 8 is the same as 8-bit or equal to 256, but then we also count 0 as a value, so the range there is 0 to 255. I'm going to change that output data type to byte, so that will force them to be full numbers there as well. And then I can go ahead and run that process. So which I've already done and I'm just going to bring up in a new display that image that I've created. And as you'll see, when, when it pops up, the, the stretch on that isn't very nice because it's gone back to being the full display of 0 to 255. So I'm just going to go to Enhance and scroll Linear 2%. And when I do that, you'll be able to see that my image looks pretty much the same as what that original image looked at. Um, so the difference here is that when you look at the pixel values, you can see these values here, they're much larger. So before they were floating point between a value of 0 and 1, and now they're falling between 0 and 255. So I can just kill that off for the moment. But what I'd also like to show you is the statistics for my AB display. So I've just gone ahead and created the statistics file there. And so you can see the, the average value in each of the bands um, and you can see between 0 and 255 is, um, as my range that the spectral values can be. Now also if I look at creating a spectral signature, again you'll see on the y-axis values between 0 and 255 and you can see just a standard vegetation curve there as I've picked an area of mangroves and that looks as you would expect a vegetation spectral curve to look at. So when we change the radiometric resolution it also has an impact on the spectral information that we get out of it. But let's have a look at how that occurs. So the next stage that I'm going to do is to go through and stretch my data um, from that original file but this time, instead of going from 0 to 255, I'm going to go from 0 to 15. Okay, so if I go from 0 to 15, this gives me a 4-bit data set. Okay, so 2 to the power of 4 equals 16. Again, counting 0 as a number, we've got a range of 0 to 15. Changing that to a byte value and run that. So if I now display just going to minimize some of these ones here. If I now display my 4-bit image as a true color image, even when it, without it being stretched, you'll start to see that there's some very different patterns in this image here. Okay, so remembering what I've done here is I've changed, having, changed being able to have a potential potential value of anywhere between 0 and 255 to now I can only have a range of between 0 and 15. So pixels 
basically have to decide which number they're going to fit into and it means that you'll have many more pixels with, a, with the same given number that otherwise would have been separated out beforehand. And to have a look at a little bit more in detail here, let's have a look at the statistics that we have. So 8-bit data, so the 4-bit data here, again, you can see that the minimum value in each band is still 0, but now we're only getting up to a maximum of 15. And you can see even in this over, overview image here, how there's now these, these hard lines between pixels that are essentially grouped together to form similar colours. And one of the interesting things that you'll see is now if I pick on that same area down here that I know to be mangroves, if I look at the spectral profile, it's really difficult to see anything there. And the reason being is that now my maximum value can only be 15. So what I'm going to do is to zoom into that part of the spectral profile. So to do that, I'm just clicking and holding that middle mouse button, or for me it's a wheel. I'm just going to draw out a box and let go. And as I do that, this is now what we see the spectral profile to be of vegetation. So remembering that everything can only have a value of between 0 and 15, it really skews the actual, uh, the actual profile that you're able to see at the end. So that's how we have, have linked both the radiometric resolution with the spectral resolution or the spectral information that can be extracted.